I'm back at the school with the bitch Miss Thompson after I cursed her out. She kicks me out of class. I go through these different multiple classes before they finally find me a fifth grade home. And that's with my teacher, Mr. Burns. So Mr. Burns is this, uh, he's not fat, fat, but he kind of fat and light skin. He has some freckles and these glasses, but he was menacing looking. He wide, he used to wear a lot of button ups and they motherfuckers, he used to wear them big ass button ups. Look like he had on, on sheet, like nigga, he looked like he threw the cover. <laughs> He looked like he threw a fitted sheet on and just put buttons on the motherfucker. He needed the shirt that big because when you big like that, that shit don't even look like clothes no more. But he wasn't that big, big, but he was in the middle. He was right in the middle. OK, so his big, um, horribly built ass. <laughs> he was a man. This is my first time ever having a male teacher. I ain't know these motherfuckers exist. And only time I ever seen a male teacher was a substitute. But that's neat to hear no that. <laughs> so anyway. I finally get to Mr. Burns class. They like, okay, this is going to be your class. You know, I went through the classes where I cut the frog. Um, that teacher that, you know, I really, I'm, I'm mad. I can't remember her name, but she really looked out for me and helped me a lot in my, in my growth and like helped me going through a tough time. And like, even she probably, I don't know if she knew it, but that shit meant a lot to me. Cause especially the way I see shit, I see how deeply that was. Like you caring for me is so much more than just caring for me. Like you have no reason to care for me. I'm not your child. You're going to get paid whether, you know, I learn or not or pass or not. That's the shit Miss Thompson, that bitch Miss Thompson used to say to us. But so I know she doesn't have to help me and I didn't ask for it. She just offered it because she saw me in need. That's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing to do to a child because that act that you're teaching them, that act that that child gets to perceive is an act of kindness. We're selfless. Remember when I told you guys in the earlier episodes about friends, it was like, it's no such thing as a selfless good deed. And the motherfuckers tripping because motherfuckers couldn't find it. I even remember asking. And people was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a selfless good deed. She got paid no matter what. No matter what I did, she was going to get paid. She just had to be there. But she saw me in need. She saw me not doing well and tried to help the best she could. It's the try for me. And to do that for a stranger, because I'm a little stranger, I'm a kid, but I'm still a little stranger. That's not even going to be in your class. I wasn't even going to be permanently in her class. She knew I was there temporarily and she still reached out and helped me. That's something to give to a kid to perceive that maybe they may pay that for it. But when they see someone in need, they understand someone's in need. Maybe they'll reach out and help them because they were able to see it, perceive it, learn from it, get an idea. Have a thought, bring that thought into a belief and then act it out. And that act becomes an act of kindness. Not saying you'll be kind because even actors get off work. But you do an act of kindness because you learned it from what you saw. And I just uh, appreciated that so much. Even she was the facilitator that brung Mr. Lewis and you knowing me have that story. Like, I just never want to be hungry or homeless again. That shit's crazy. So anyway, I'm with Mr. Burns. They let me know this is going to be my teacher. Now, looking back, I think I know why they put me in Mr. Burns class, because every class I went to was a fifth grade class. And clearly they had room because I could sit there. I think they wanted to put me in Mr. Burns class because he was a man who was strict. And I guess they felt like, yeah, a little kid like that need a strict hand because I think they could have put me in some other classes. Especially the lady that helped me like that would have been lovely. I probably would have completed that year and never got kicked out. <laughs> but they put me in Mr. Burns class and they let me know immediately his little fat, bad body built ass didn't play. First day I'm in the class, this nigga grabbed his little, um, the little paddles, the little wood paddles. And he is, he put duct tape around it, the handle and everything. Right. And he wrote some shit. I forgot what was on it, but he wrote some shit on it. I think it was for me because it wasn't like this was the beginning of the class. This wasn't his first time seeing his class. I am just getting to the class. This class year has been going. I've had Miss Thompson, the bitch Miss Thompson, nigga. So why he just all of a sudden, like after I get in the class, same day, he just decided to stand up. I think it was the next day. It may have been the same day. I know it was in the day. Within one, either it was that day that I got put in this class because he did it at the end of the class. And I think it was the first day. 
and the motherfucker pull up was what you call and he, you know, showed he was flipping it around. Just threatening children. Why are you threatening kids? Talking about how you going to beat our ass with this paddle, basically. That's what he doing. He threatening us, saying in his classroom, if you fuck up, he gonna, he, he don't need to talk to your mama. He going to whip your ass and let your mama know he whipped your ass. He was talking real tough. He thought he's scaring 10 year olds. Like, why are you, <laughs> you're a grown ass man. Why you ain't here trying to scare 10 year olds? But anyway, so I get it. That was his thing. And I felt some type of way about that. Why the fuck is you talking about this? Like, this had nothing to do with the curriculum. Why are you threatening us that you're going to hit us with a paddle? Mind you, I'm crazy. That shit don't stop just at children. Like, that shit was crazy for real. I don't, I don't like bullies. That shit felt bullyish to me. And who the fuck is you talking to? I didn't like that shit. So the first thing I thought in my mind when I'm listening to this pussy motherfucker talk, mind you, this is in my mind at this time. But watching this pussy motherfucker talk about how he going to hit me. Because that, that's how I feel like he talking directly to me. Because I'm the only one new to this class. That he going to hit me with a paddle if I fuck up. Because I'm sure y'all been in this classroom already. And if he didn't whoop motherfuckers, they knew. And if he do the speech, he already gave them the speech. I'm the only nigga new in here. So who the fuck is you threatening? I didn't like that shit. I didn't like that shit at all. So the first thought I had was, I wish that motherfucker would hit me with that motherfucker. Now, mind you, class goes on. Every day, we just doing regular classwork. Every day, I am getting more and more irritated by Mr. Burns because I feel like every day he didn't get that speech about how he whoop ass again made me further know that that nigga was talking to me saying, if I get, if Q, the nigga you just met, I'm 10 years old, my nigga, I just got here. So you telling me that if I get out of line, you going to whoop me like you my daddy or something and tell my mama, you threatening my mama, nigga? I don't like none of this shit. <laughs> and you know what's crazy? I'm not even being a class clown. I kind of was. Okay, let me take that back. So I was, yeah, I was still acting up. But in moments, in pockets, like that nigga would just walk past and I'd look at his ass. like, And that shit used to irritate me like, Every day, like, I don't like the way he walking. He walking like he think he tough. Like, I ain't like that shit. I do. And you know what's crazy? I still don't like that shit. <laughs> I don't like when a motherfucker walk around me like you think you tough. Like, that shit irritate me. But anyway, I told you I'm crazy. Stop judging people. So anyway, every day going by, I'm working, class clowning, doing my career. No real interactions. No. No, I think we did have a couple interactions where he said some shit to me and pushed me down one time. Like, he had pushed me in the chair. And, dude, I wanted to fight. I wanted to fight. I didn't fight that day. But he pushed me back down that chair, and I jumped up, and he turned around, nigga, like, like I was ready to go. And Mr. Burns was not small. Mr. Burns was big and very menacing looking. Big, wide body, bad body, built ass. Nigga, built like laundry, over stuff, a bag. You know, like how you get, <laughs> you know how you get the motherfucking laundry bags and like when you stuff them and they stretch, like, you know, how you put a bunch of clothes at the bottom. Then in the middle, you make it a little wider. That's how he was built. That's how he was built. Then he had freckles. I ain't like that either. I just, after that speech, it, I was just fine and shit. I'm like, I don't like this about this nigga. I don't like the way the nigga say my name in morning attendance. Don't, don't say my name like that. I slap your ass. And then we get to the point that motherfucker pushed me back down in the chair and I jumped up. You know how stupid I must have looked as a little ass kid jumped up to this grown man. <laughs> little as hell jump up with so much ferocity. I just knew I was going to fuck him up. I didn't really, I didn't believe I would. But I needed him to know to stop playing with me because I ain't like that shit. And now you didn't push me down in the chair. You know how many days it's been since you gave that speech? Every day has got worse because I felt like you was talking to me. And I don't appreciate that shit because I wish a motherfucker would hit me across my ass with that thick ass paddle with fucking duct tape on it. You, you, hey, don't play with me, man. So days after the push thing go by, like every day, I'm like fuming. Every day I'm mugging him. I'm mugging him. He just ignoring me and shit. But sometimes I, I catch him like not liking that I was mugging him. I ain't give a fuck. I'm going to keep mugging him, nigga. Fuck you talking about? This is the only win I got. I am a child. Don't forget. I am 10 years old. But I don't like this shit, though. I don't like it. So, boom. This motherfucker gets sick. Stupid ass. Sick. Man, you a teacher. Take better care of yourself. <laughs> Bad body, wide body built ass. 
<laughs> so his dumb ass gets sick. <laughs> yeah, his dumb ass gets sick. And we get substitute. That's what happened in school. When your teacher d- stupid like that and get sick, dumb ass going to get sick. Goof ass. Anyway, this dumb ass gets sick, we get substitute. Now, I ain't like this shit. I walk into class, right on the motherfucking, on the little board, my name. Boom. In the middle. It was, I think it was at top. I forgot what my name was at, but I know my name was on that motherfucking board. Like, basically telling the substitute who in the fuck to look out for. My nigga, you just met me. I got to this class not too long ago. First, you gave a motherfucking speech threatening me that you're going to whip my ass, and I ain't like that shit. Then the altercation we had where you pushed me in a chair, and I was already not liking your everyday strut. I wasn't like how you was looking, talking. I ain't like none of that shit. So now you was really pushing it. Then you gonna put my motherfucking name on the board. Like, you ain't even give me a chance to be bad today. Like, my nigga, this is not okay. I don't appreciate it. I don't give a fuck what happened in the past. I don't give a fuck how many times I clowned in this class and classed in this clown. How the fuck you won't say it? I don't give a fuck how many times that happened. You give me a chance with each new day. All we got is today. Yesterday is history. Don't let your past tell your presence of bullshit to think you know my future. I don't like that shit. I'm 10 years old. I am very upset. <laughs> and you going to throw my motherfucking name on the board that I just got here. My nigga. Like, I don't like it. I don't like it. Maybe, maybe because I ain't have a father. Maybe that's probably what played a part. I'm going to just tell y'all the truth. I really think not having a father there in my life fucked with me a lot with men and shit and authority. But that's a whole nother issue. We'll probably tackle that in season two. So, boom. My name on the board. I don't like none of that shit. Now, mind you, I proceed to definitely deserve to have my name on the board. Every day, every day I found a new way to deserve to have my name on that goddamn board. Let me tell you something. I was hooping. We was coming up with games and shit. We we was saying, um, what was the word? Damn, it wasn't bitch. It was a word that kind of sound like bitch. It was, I think it was witch. And, oh my goodness, the shit was just crazy. Like, I just kept screaming it out, witch! And they'd be like, what'd you say? I'd be like, I didn't curse, I said witch. And then, they was like, pitch! And they what? What'd you say? I didn't curse. I didn't say the word you think I said. I said pitch. And they'd be like, okay. I'd be like, snit, you feel? That's what I was doing. I was doing that. Oh, I was the, I thought, I, was, I told y'all I love basketball. You know how many times a motherfucking three-point competition started with balled up pieces of paper and that motherfucking garbage can looking like the NBA ram? Nigga, we was in that bitch shooting, goddamn it. Nigga, ugh. Niggas doing crossovers and shit. Fuck this substitute. We don't respect you because this is your part-time job. <laughs> you ain't our teacher forever. Why should we respect you? <laughs> this is how we felt as children. Don't judge me, okay? You probably felt this way, too, while you over there trying to judge somebody. So, boom. I deserve to have my name on that board every motherfucking day. I did different games. I was, oh, I was so disruptive. Damn. Woo. But I just didn't like that he put my name on the board before he allowed, like, because maybe him putting my name on the board made me act like that. Think about it. Think about it. You don't know what came, what was causing what. Don't care about what happened in the past. Don't, don't think about that. Don't focus on the negative. Focus on focus on positive. Today. Don't focus on yesterday. All we got is today. So today, how you gonna put my have my name on the board? And I ain't did nothing yet. You 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 living in the past. And I don't I didn't appreciate. It. Even at that age, I did not appreciate that. Now it's neither here nor there that I deserve to have my name on that motherfucker board every day. I made sure it was worthy. I made sure my name being on that board was worthy. Niggas would go erase their name from time to time. I never erased it my name. I was proud of it. Because <laughs> I said I'm going to work for that motherfucker every day. Every day I'm working for it. So boom, substitute gone. I come in that day. I felt like I should retire. I forgot how long he was sick. He's stupid. Dumb ass got sick too long. Goof ass. And he's gone for a while. So... I had been having a ball in this classroom. Ugh. I felt like I had some some new way to disrupt. And nobody disruption was better than my disruption. I'm going to tell y'all the truth. I was the top disruptor. I didn't just let my name be on the board. I let me be in first place. And I made sure I was the one. Because uh, you know sometimes when people get in trouble, it'd be like, oh, it's that one kid. That's because his disruptions are the best. Like, it'd be other disruptions going on. But that kid, they go to the office a lot. That motherfucker is is... 
he's the epitome of disruptions. He's a king when it comes to disruptions. And I was one of the motherfuckers. Oh, yeah, I was one of the motherfuckers. But the judgment, don't do that to nobody. Don't what I tell you about judging people. Come on now. Judge not lest ye be judged. Talk to me. Don't get me preaching. Huh. Talk to me. So however long his ass was gone, I walk in the classroom ready to, you know, I'm setting up for the day. You know what I'm saying? I'm setting up. It's like going to work. It's like, oh, let me put my lunch box down. Ugh. Let me stretch. I made sure I did that disruption that day. I don't want to do that again. You know, I ain't never want to do the same disruptions. You know, you got to give them, you got to give them options. You can't disrupt all the time, the same day, every day. No, you got to mix your disruptions up. That's what makes you a top disruptor. You might not understand this if you want a top disruptor. I was a top disruptor. You understand me? So you got to be one of the greats to really understand this shit. So you got to hit them with a variety of disruptions. So this day I'm coming in. Thinking of, you know, what I'm going to hit him with. You know, I don't just walk in there. I ain't just do, well, I did it off the cuff, but I still planned it a little bit. Just like this show. Just like this show. That's how I treated my disruptions. So as I'm walking up, like, oh, man, did I select, you know, which disruptions I want to do? Oh, I could do this. Yeah, I did that Thursday. I don't want to do that again. So I'm walking in, boom. And the room was dark. Like, that was another thing, like. The nigga lowered the lights. Why is you in here sitting here ominous, little goof ass? Stupid ass. Why not you just sit walking at Mr. Motherfucking Mr. Burns just sitting right there, just looking over there, looking flabby and sick, fat ass, nigga. <laughs> so his ass just sitting over there. He's sitting over there with the, oh, yeah, y'all in trouble. Daddy's home. Look on his face. Get your goof ass out of here. I ain't like it. I ain't like that he was doing that. I didn't. So we get the class and shit names is off the board like our names are not on the board anymore because i guess he know the disruptors i'm like damn you know look like i'm gonna go back to my regular disruptions i ain't finna do my expert disruptions for the real teacher we do that for the substitute so i'm like okay you know take the take the disruptions down you know just regular disruptions from time to time you know that motherfucker didn't say nothing about all the disruptions he didn't say a motherfucking word you understand me? He just regular started class. I'm looking like, I'm like, damn, that bitch ass substitute ain't even say nothing. Goof ass, bitch ass substitute, you man. We got you, goof ass, me. <laughs> we destroyed his pride. We got him. We beat him down. <laughs> and he's never going to believe in himself. He was never strong enough to fuck with us. We destroyed him. We destroyed a substitute. This is what's going on in my mind. So, toward the end of the day, <laughs> we had a regular school day. Toward the end of the day, <laughs> we all in line. And I used to be the back line captain. Like, I used to, I don't know if y'all had line captains, but line captains in, in my schools coming up used to walk down the hallway. Like, you had to walk with your teacher. You know, like prisoners, but whatever. So, you walk with your teacher. Your teacher sits on the outside, and then the first, the person in front, they're the front line captain. So, they lead to where we going. When they be like, stop, like, you know, you got to stop, and you got to know to stop on their command. <sighs> You don't, you don't see, you don't see a problem with this. They training your children to be prisoners and, oh my God, and just be followers and shit. Ugh, and it's so much slavery mentally, but we'll probably get into that season two, but that's when we get more into the false God society, but whatever, whatever. Let's get back to the story. So in the line, the person that's in front walking, they're the front line captain. You follow them. But we also had this thing called back line captain. The back line captain was the person that made sure motherfuckers that the front line captain didn't see stayed in line. So like when everybody turn, turn, like motherfucker trying to jump out like, hey, 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 I'm back line captain. Get back in line. You know, so they gave us children power. Front line captain, they follow you. And when you stop, they stop. You running this. And it, and it falls on you to make sure you do what you got to do so they know what to do behind you. See the correlation? Anyway. But I like to be the back line captain. So I like to keep niggas in line because I can see everything from the back. You know what I'm saying? I can see everybody. Everybody's in line. Have many students here. I'm back here. I can see y'all. Front line captain, they lead. I got you. But I'm back here making sure everything behind you good. See the correlation? But anyway, so as the back line captain, there was another surface reason I like being the back line captain. Um, I don't know if all, anybody that's listening to me or if everybody listening to me saw the movie Friday. But there's a part in Friday where they do a thing that we actually did as kids. 
But when a person is walking in front of you, right, they walk one leg in front of the other leg. So when the front leg, as they're in stride, becomes the back leg, you basically kick that leg to the other leg to make them, like, do a little stumble, like a little trip. But they don't never really fall, but they stumble. Like, if you make a motherfucker fall from that, you were, like, legendary with that shit. But that's how you trip them. They do it on the movie Friday if you want a real-life visual. Why motherfucker just walk and you just kick their leg to the other one and kind of trip them and shit. And I used to do that. <laughs> I used to love that shit. Motherfucker be mad. Said, shit, if I beat your ass, nigga, I'm violent. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Motherfucker, you switch spots in line and shit. Like, man, come on, you tripping me. Hey, you don't, don't, don't trip me. I ain't nobody finna trip you, man. Go on, keep walking. Trip that. Uh, fuck you talking about, nigga. I'm here to trip and I'll beat your ass. Fuck you talking about. I come to school to let off some frustration. <laughs> I'm ready to throw them blows. <laughs> throw them bows. We just finna get it. So, backline captain. But this day, we set up a line, backline captain. It's toward the end of the day. I think it was the line waiting on the bell to go home. I think that's what bell it was. And another thing with them bells, that, like you in prison or you cattle, but whatever. Don't talk to me about what they're training your kids to do in public schools. But neither here nor there. Not right now. If you know about yourself, you'll start probably seeing the bullshit and then you'll know how important your job as like a parent is to mold that deity and not let them motherfuckers, people like that bitch, Miss Thompson, mold who your kids are. You be the most important vibration to that kid and pass them on something that's not only you gaining their attention, keeping their attention, but being worthy of their attention. By giving them something valuable when they give you something valuable like their attention. So your attention that you give me is extremely valuable. I understand that because you're paying me with attention. That's why I can do this first season for free. I might do the next one for free because I understand if you're going to give me something as valuable as your attention, I want what I give you to be just as valuable to pay you back. And that's why I can say I love you guys because remember I told you love. Is everything to me. Once love get involved, you become indebted to that love. You always feel like you're paying it back. That's why I liken love to like God. Because it says God so loved the world, gave his only begotten son. Love comes with sacrifice. So God sacrificed something it created. Something that it, as a parent you love it. Think about the concept of how much, if you're a parent, how much you love your child. That you would die for that child. But imagine loving something so strongly that the level of that you would die for that child, you would have to love something so great to give something that valuable away. That would be a crazy sacrifice. But nobody talks about God's sacrifice in the story. They just talk about Jesus's. And I get it. Jesus sacrificed from the story. That is a great sacrifice. If somebody really did that shit for me. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that shit. Oh, that's amazing. That is amazing. To sit there and suffer just so I be I and you ain't never met me. Dude, that sounds like love. You know, they say, like, what would Jesus do? Be more like Jesus. You don't see me doing the same thing, trying to give you something. But, you know, but neither here nor there. I'm sacrificed. We ain't even going to talk about that because you're going to be like, it's not at the same level. Don't judge. Don't judge. <laughs> But anyway, backline captain, right? But this day, as we're about to leave or whatever the fuck, I know it was one of the last bells. Oh, he didn't forget. He didn't forget we was fucking up with the substitute. No, no, no. Mr. Burns didn't forget. The substitute wasn't defeated and just didn't say anything. Mr. Burns probably erased them names because he was like, oh, no, I got something for these motherfuckers. They think it's a game. They want to play with Mr. Burns. Did not threaten Q in front of y'all. Did not threaten y'all. Y'all remember this? Y'all remember this? Y'all want to play with me, Mr. Burns? I'm going to play mind games with you. So as we stand in line, he had, because it was the girls' line and the boys' line. So usually, it's always the girls' lines first. Mr. Burns had this thing about ladies first. So ladies always got in line first. He's, you know, that's some gentleman shit. I'm cool with that. Cool. With, shouts out to him for that. The gentleman shit, I appreciate that. I even appreciate his, like, wanting to whoop ass and be that reflection of a man. I don't have a problem with Mr. Burns on what he was as a teacher. Not like that bitch, Miss Thompson. I actually like what Mr. Burns decided to come with as a teacher. 
just me personally, I didn't like his energy. Like, I didn't like that shit. Don't play tough with me, dude. I don't like that. It felt kind of bullyish. I ain't like it. I just didn't like it. That's the part of it I ain't like. Because, like, you acting like you really tough. And who is you threatening? I don't like that. Don't threaten me. I don't play that shit. I'm 10 years old, man. You're just a grown-ass man. But this is what I'm going through. So as this day, he say, you know, boys get in line. And we had to, like, jump up and get in line and, uh, you know, whatever. He say, boys get in line first. I'm already, man, something going on. The motherfucking room still dim. Why the fuck is this room dim today? The lights is usually on. This shit, like, low clouds in this motherfucker. Like, why is the lights this dim? We ain't watch a movie or nothing. He ain't have all the lights off. It was just enough. Like, it was like the lights was turned down. Not turned down romantically, like a notch or two brighter than romantically. Like, just, just the motherfucker just out there. Just, like, it's, it's, it's not too light. It's not too dark. You can see anything, but you notice the difference. So, boys get in line first. And I'm back there. I'm back line, Captain. So, I see everybody. Mr. Burns, get up. Mr. Burns walk over there, grab the um, yardstick. Y'all know the yardstick, like a three foot long ruler, right? So he goes over there and get the yardstick. And it was a dramatization to his walk. He didn't just grab it and just walk over there. I'm finna whoop y'all ass. No, 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 no. He grabs the stick. Everybody going, ooh, all the girls and shit, ooh. Cause she know, they know Mr. Burns said he going to whoop ass. And some of y'all was acting up. So. He just basically, you know, went from the front of the line. Whoever was a, you know, name, he would smack them on the ass with the yardstick. And they would sit there and go, hmm, you know, rub their butt. I already told y'all what I said. I wish this motherfucker would hit me with this motherfucking paddle. What the fuck you think he going to hit me with a yardstick? My nigga, do not hit me. Who the fuck do you think you are, nigga? Don't. Hit me. I wish this motherfucker would 